Hello everyone and welcome back to Koi Losers where today we are continuing our Thrawn's Revenge Imperial Civil War 2.2 preview playthrough as the Empire of the Hand. In the last episode we uh, got some revenge on the Penistar alignment. We killed Sisko in the Venge... I think that was last episode. It might have been two episodes ago. I don't remember. But I also said we were going to uh, take some revenge on the Avitha for not properly blocking out Zinj. But I did actually rig the new Fall of the Republic model for the Lucre Hawk, so it's in here as well, the Trade Federation version is what we're going with for now, uh, whether we eventually swap for like the modified Battleship version, but like we're trying to go for an updated version for this period, so like the CSA would have got them and then uh, probably would have made their own refits to it, so rather than like sticking directly to an older model of the Lucre Hawk, which isn't super useful at this point anymore, uh, we'll try to update that. Uh, but yeah, so that hasn't, the XML part of it hasn't been done yet, but we do have the new model in, so at least it's not ugly to look at while you kill it. Uh, so I am going to go and we're going to try to fight one of those oh, first, and then we're going to kill the Yvithans. Uh, we also have enough credits to start building up an extra fleet. To well, not extra, we need to block this Bellator from doing bad things to us. Building Let's get some stuff built at Morishim. Do we really need to... No, not really. Construction complete. So we're gonna we're gonna just go forward. We're gonna do that fight. Then we're gonna invade Mrist. But uh, I th I think we're in a better position now. We fought off most of the assault. The Araidu we can apparently deal with. Um, like all the ground stuff there, they're not gonna get a good foothold into our territory, even if they can take over space. So we might stop trying to fight them in space when they come for the moment until we can get like two or three main fleets. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to be the last week where I'm focusing on pretty much Ascendancy the way I've been uh, focusing on it. And then once that's in testing, I can't really develop new stuff for it until uh, all the testing is done and we're developing the next version. So my focus is going to be pretty much entirely on uh, ICW after that so like we do have people on the team who are always working on one or the other but for anyone who does sort of both Choose your uh, we'll be focusing on just ICW Order confirmed. Uh, Choose your reinforcements coming around Target locked. if you insist we can just make sure we're not getting attacked by the Golans while well, we have to finish off the uh, the raid fleet, and that'll be good. Like a Syndic should be more than enough to chase down the Lucre Hulk. Let's see if we can get the next shot from the the Peltist on the Golan. We'll get the Phalanx after the Golan. We'll get Thrawn after that Golan. These guys going like that. And let's grab our fighters. We'll go in there. Taking fire. Yes, come on. We've got them on scopes. Awaiting orders. Where'd he go? Nowhere to run. Awaiting uh, orders. There we go. Moving to coordinates. Go after them. Falling out. Awaiting your command. If uh so something that's actually come up pretty often in the comments is uh trying to or people asking to have the fighters and bombers separated by uh, like when you have them all selected here, uh, people would say, oh, why did you switch it so that it's not fighters and bombers separate? But the way that works is it's based on abilities, the way all the build bar stuff is separated. So uh, what I've been thinking about, if we don't end up having like different standard fighter and bomber abilities, what we could do, uh, what I might do is, come, I haven't done any of the like extra damage particles or anything, but uh, anyways, what we might end up doing it's putting in a stock like identifier ability that doesn't actually do anything it's just sort of like a flag for the game and then if everything else is the same we'll be able to have them at least separated that way like just a a fake ability that doesn't actually do anything it's just there to to work as an identifier for the game We'll just kill all those fighters. Hey, how are you still alive? Attacking. 
You've not been doing your work there, Cynic. Yeah, there's like four or five variations of the Lucre Hulk, and I'm gonna have to do all the rigging of them, and then I'm gonna do the, like, the damage particles and everything together uh, once we start coding it in for Father Republic as well. Oh, crap. Star Destroyer standing by. Star Destroyer reporting in. Ready for command, sir. I was not paying attention to this. Why did I think the... Yes, come on. Enemies in range. I am ready. Awaiting orders. Firing. So usually you want to keep your peltists in the back. So I wasn't really considering them as, uh... Engaging the enemy. Being in any kind of danger. Are our Choose your reinforcements. Move out. Reinforcements cancelled. Awaiting your command. Your command, sir. Commander. Reporting All right. Uh, so we'll have to replace that. That's my fault. As things so often are. But we'll need something to actually just kill the VSD. So. We've got them on the scope. Cynic and the Phalanx are good enough. Okay, we can get this to swap now. It's got enough weaponry on each side that I can shoot both. Attack. Destroyer here. I've been looking at uh, potential upgrades to my computer once I've saved up some money, so it won't be for a while, but... Uh, whether I'm going to upgrade my graphics card or my processor just for like better video quality and to render videos faster mm -hmm. essentially is what I'm really looking for because I can usually play whatever I want but if I'm trying to record and play at the same time Indeed. well obviously I'd have to be playing to be recording but uh, you know what I mean right it can it's a bit more taxing so whatever I need to upgrade all whatever the benefit is from I can't really afford to do both I can't really afford to do one but eventually I'll be able to afford to do one and not the other so, it's just what I decided to do first, whether my graphics card's alright, my processor's alright. Oh, cool. I, I think they just took the planet, too. Analyst. Yeah, we can defend this. We have a barracks, and it's this map, so they're always going to be spread out. Sometimes I feel like even just like a an, a script that forces the AI to select all its units and just order an attack would make it more effective than what it actually has going on. Because really they just like randomly fly around the map scouting it out. Like we remove that behavior for the fighters, but uh, you may have noticed in... Some of the more recent Give me a episodes, the fighter AI or the fighters have been a bit more uh, consistent on what they're doing. Ready, advancing. Over here, we got that AA turret. Let's uh. Tank brigade here. We'll build a build a repair thingy. Construction complete. So so far, we think we've, we've got that mostly we sorted. The fighter behaviors, but. And like Corvettes, how they'd, no they'd normally just send them all over the map, and they wouldn't actually fight you with them. Yes, sir. Your orders. Construction complete. Roger that. I mean, I'm just, I'm gonna sit here all day. All right, man, take cover. Entering battlefield. Why did you shoot over there? This is really weird water. Like, what are they? Is this just a big river of orange crush? Awaiting orders. Roger. Affirmative. Reporting in. Target confirmed. Oh, this is the Yeah, the specialist bug. Squad, I have that written on my Right away, sir. My whiteboard. Squad, I, I think they're set to different speeds. There we go. Roger that. Form up. 
Yeah, that's why you can see him over here. You can see him over here. Advance. They're not Move tied out. in. Right away. Moving to that area, sir. Awaiting order. Reporting. Okay. T4B mobile. Because usually that's caused by uh, the stuff working, the stuff in the squad having different speeds. But I haven't actually looked at it to figure it out yet, so it's, pro it's probably a simple fix. I just have to take the time to fix it. Do not have a crush box? There you go. Give me the target. I got me. Spread out, man. All right. Rather than deal with the weird buggy infantry, so I'm actually going to make sure I do that between the episodes here. That's going to be something that I focus on. That's happened a lot with. I think it's just been the PA that we've had happen with. But still. Oh, they're connected back there. Uh, yeah, we're building a lot of stuff there. Construction. Grab a couple of those. Constructing. We'll get building an auto station and a vis via. I wanted to see what was in that Bellator fleet. Let's go there. Are they gonna invade again? No. Okay. Construction. Let's just get all of that. In production. Vehicle in production. Here, sir. And Orleas, do we wanna I knew Yeah, they're not gonna have anything there. Underway. We may as well. They've got that line. I, I am gonna I think I am gonna leave them for now. Because they're back to being an effective barrier, and that's all I care about. Invasion commencing. But like the this the specialist bug is a good example of why when people ask when it's coming out, Reporting. basically just have to say not yet. Because there's a lot of stuff that is still in progress Choose and has no to be done. Like with the uh, preview playthroughs, a lot we I tend to end up focusing on finishing off Order the stuff that we're going to be. Showing off seems just as a prioritization thing, but there's plenty of parts of the mod that are still a lot more in progress, and right away. it'll take a fair like we're not super far away, but like don't take the fact that Course I'm plotted. doing these playthroughs to mean it's gonna be like next week or something. And just because of how much is changed, it's gonna take a lot of testing. But we're probably gonna go with a similar testing thing. That we are with ascendancy where we're going to start more closed off and then get it progressively more and more open but we tend to be a bit more uh i guess controlled as far as how we do the testing for icw versus ascendancy like in ascendancy it's just everything's going to be on one map or on uh like everything just functions within the map but it doesn't really change how it's going to function between the maps so it's really just different layouts for same sort of stuff whereas in icw it's all scripted separately so, uh, like what works in one GC may have some problems in another GC, like the events and everything. So it's important that every map gets tested as every possible faction. Whereas, like, again, in Ascendancy, you can have whatever combination of factions you want on the map or on different maps. As long as the factions all get thoroughly tested, you're probably okay. Uh, like yes, earn all the random events or whatever, but they're all going to be on each map. So right. if there's like a bug oh, within the New Republic version of the uh, 
GC number 19, then we need to have that specific this way. version of the GC tested. Like even playing through 73 times on the remnant version of the same GC, you're going to come across stuff that you, or situations that you wouldn't have come across uh, in the New Republic, or vice versa. So it's... We tend up having to, like we'll get a bunch of testers, we'll say, okay, so your job for the next few weeks is you're going to play the, just play this GC like as many times as possible all the way through as this faction. Uh, don't just find a technique that works and win this way. Make sure you're trying, like, try it this way, then try it a different way, then try it a third way. Make sure you're using varied units. Make sure you're using varied uh, hero combinations. Get the heroes killed at different times, especially if they fire an event. Usually it's fine. If they don't fire an event, we can just make sure their basic functionality works. But if it's something that, uh, like, the era changes, like, make sure you get the air change to happen before a faction's dead. Maybe make sure you get it tested after the faction's dead. Because uh, there was the, the bug in 2.1 before the patch where uh, if you changed eras after another faction, another major faction had died, it was trying to spawn some new heroes or some new units for a faction that didn't exist anymore. So it would make the game crash, and uh, so we released a patch that fixed that, but we want to address Let's it a go. different way. Because the way we fixed that yes, sir. in the 2.1 patch was, uh, Keep going. like it worked, but it, was, it wasn't the most elegant solution, I guess. Roger. Uh, over there. It essentially made a safety overflow planet for every faction, so there's a planet there's off the map that was inaccessible, that if stuff Roger. really needed to spawn, uh, right it could spawn there, and it wouldn't cause an issue for the game. Uh, but what it would mean is that the game wouldn't the end noise. in the same we way it normally would. Which, there's a workaround for that, but the way we want to do it now is just by branching the story event, which is like, more proper right of a way to do it, but that'll Come mean on, man, we need to test those scenarios all again in those specific events. And then if you have the events working differently between different GCs, especially now that there's like the mini half air changes and like regicide where you can opt into it we're not sure exactly how everything's going to work so like you need to we need to get as much information on as many different variations as we can uh like there's even some crashes in the 2.2 demo if certain things happen uh in the hunt for zinch gc which didn't come up at all during testing no matter how many times we tested through it because there's only so many people and we, I think we had four testers, Miller, Pally, uh, Lord Zizer, and Revenchist. I don't, no, Porto wasn't a tester yet, but plus like the dev team, but it's a lot harder to find that thing and, or find those things on smaller teams then. So we want to get the internal testing, then we want to get uh, more open but still directed, and we'll try to get as much as we can, but th stuff like that is why the... Uh, the betas have to go for so long. Like, we'd rather release over a longer period of time than have to, like, release the mod and put up seven patches, because then it gets more complicated for people to install. There's more chances for something to go in wrong that way. Uh, with one patch, it's usually not bad, but if people try to install patch three and then install patch two over that, they'll break something, and then uh, some people aren't great with just computers in general, so they don't... We get enough questions on just how to install the mod itself. Uh, plus other mods. Like someone messaged me on Steam a few years ago asking me questions uh, for tech support for Republic at War because they didn't want to bother Xerox. It's like, okay, great. So you... But it's his mod. Oh, I didn't understand that logic very much. Uh, what do we got going on here? The Zinch fleet down there. T2B over. Ooh, Maldrude fleet coming in there, so let's... Complete. Go drop this at Morishim. Construction complete. There's Teradoc. Gosh, Teradoc, not the other Teradoc. Let's see what Maldrew's actually got over here. 
we did need a new peltist. Build that there. We can... I don't want to invade. Uh, let's grab a couple carry-ex. A couple carriers as well. Alright, so they're invading. Hmm. Didn't notice that coming in. I probably should have. But we've got a Peltis and we've got two Visphia. So we're we're good against the heavy stuff, but the fighters are going to be an issue. I think I just talked for like 10 minutes straight about that testing stuff. Oh well. I feel like I've gotten really bad for repeating myself. Like I'll say the same thing three different ways in a row and then I'll just repeat it the next episode. Or like even in general outside of doing stuff for the channel. I can swap out this trade port for uh not another Visvia, but an A. Ready for action. Ready for battle. That'd be good. But uh yeah. Roger that. Well we got a fair amount of fighters. What are you doing? Where are you going? Go over here. Awaiting orders. Instructions received. Hmm. Oh, you're... Good luck. Over there, Psycho Bomber. This is unfortunate that this is here and not here. Target locked. It'd be nice if we could change the space starting positions like you can on land, but unfortunately that's not something we can edit. Hey, well, you missed. Right. This is actually a good way to start this. It's a small section. That's going to be too far. Oh, it's not. Sweet. We can get that in there. If they're going to be crowding around like this, then we can actually get all four... All four mega turrets firing, which is very rare. So we're probably still going to lose this battle, but this is like the best case use scenario for this Visphia. Like if we had a couple Astoni and maybe some carriers, this would be okay. Alright, let's uh, see if we can do anything about the ISD. I'm not going to be any, doing, able to do anything about the fighters, but we can just get enough firepower poured into this guy. Like, this is all very heavy weaponry that misses occasionally. Still got one turret left. We're still flying half a turret. I mean, this could have gone worse. Especially if I can get the Peltist out of here. It looks like I can. I think it's too close. Yeah, that's really unfortunate positioning there. I might have to swap all the turret facings on the Peltis to be forward. Because it has no real way of knowing that the what's its main turret. Getting 
The more consistent you can make the the hard point facings, the more it's going to cooperate, which is kind of unfortunate because it's cooler to have like multiple firing banks and everything, but oh well. As long as you're not going for the engines. You're going for the engines. Sweet. Alright, so it, it doesn't scout with them, but it, if there's too many, I guess it does still want to group up. So we might benefit from having that... the extra script anyways. I mean, they're moving now. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Because if we do need them to be more proactive, we can, but... Right now, having them all grouped up over here and mostly fighting stuff is definitely an improvement over what they were doing before. So that's encouraging, if nothing else. Once we get some nice damage decals and everything on this, it'll look good. Come on, it's not that far away. Three more. We still got the full station, so we're gonna get a couple more fighters if we need them. Sweet. Well, this one's still alive. I don't, know. I don't know if anyone actually cares about any of the dev stuff that I talk about here. But. Like whether people would rather the commentary stay more focused on exactly what I'm doing as far as the gameplay goes here. Or what the good balance is between. Yeah, this is. What a good balance is between like gameplay commentary versus dev commentary. So. I don't know. Well, that's Tactical battle imminent. not great. What? Oh, it was just about to finish building. That was actually the second Peltist. Was it? Or no, it wasn't. Oh, that's weird. Was Bill bringing your exit point? For the retreat? It might have been. I thought it was Yaga Minor, though. That could be something we have to check out for the script, because right now I think it only checks if you own the planet, which if there's a, an enemy fleet over it, that'll be not ideal. Ready to receive orders. Well, for now I'll just retreat the regularly, and then for jump to light speed. I'll do some tests on that later. I'll get Pox to do some tests on that later. I'm sure Pox will enjoy that. One of us will do it. That will do. Uh, you are not invading Consider my planet. Tactical battle imminent. Oh, I said you're not invading my planet. You weren't listening. My nice selection ring. These are actually automatically generated from the map editor. So if anything's selected, you end up with the purple selection ring. It's also how you end up with all the markers on it. Like you can see for most of the space ones, the entry position for the Death Star. Form up. Alright, this is actually not going to be too hard to defend anyways. We've got all our turrets, got a sensor node. And see what they come in with. Oh, double A-T-T-E. They definitely need walking sounds, and the walking animation's fixed. That's all stuff we can focus on with Fall of the Republic. Moving into position. I copy. Okay. Entering battle. Heading target. We are heading assault. 
MMTs are very weak against ATATEs because of all the hard points. You're never really able to maximize your firepower as much. Alright, let's go. You guys take out the little turrets. Get back. There we go. Are you stuck on something? Good job, guys. You're officially terrible navigators. They're oh, they landed more. At least we've got the AV turret down there. Uh, but that's three out of what, five that they had? Is it just part of this map they can't get past? We'll find out. Why do they want to go this way? Oh, I guess it must have just tried to stop and then had its idle animation, or its walk animation keep playing when it was idle. That can happen, but... I kind of want to change these to match the team color, so you don't always have like the red Republic color. Cause like if we had blue ones for the PA and then the brown ones for the Zinge, for the Zinge, for Singe, then that would be better. Let's go. Oh, killed something. Were there any lats? I don't think so. Over there. Oh, here we are. Would have been nice to have. Oh, you can't just blow up my stuff. Roger that. Targeting right away, sir. The enemy has been defeated. There we go. Okay, this is gonna be slightly longer of an episode because we're gonna go kill their fleet unless they leave. Tactical battle imminent. Nope, we're gonna kill their fleet. All right. Tomorrow, there's actually going to be another Empire of the Hand video going up for Ascendancy. Uh, so I guess the thumb th th thumbnail is probably going to confuse some people because it's going to be an Empire of the Hand theme sub thumbnail. But it's uh, right away. it's not going to be part of this series. Reinforcements cancelled. We've got them. Send reinforcements. Reinforcements cancelled. Fallout. That Get drawn in there. Nicely. The Eskandinsky. We can also take bets in the comments on uh, whether or not Thrawn is going to make it through this live. I'm going to mention that at the start of the next episode. I copy. Maybe do a straw poll. Some hashtags. Get some hashtag action. People love hashtags, right? The kids these days, they love the hashtags. Star Destroyer reporting in. Attack position. Yes, Commander. I got one. Attack that target. Attacking target. Awaiting your uh, okay. Awaiting your command. Fire at will. There's still too many Lucra Hulks. They're probably smaller than they ought to be. Get behind them. What is like twenty percent, maybe? Ready. Maybe a little bit more. Pressing the attack. I'm on them. Enemies in range. Your command, sir. We'll go after the straggler. Yeah, so we got like this Trade Federation episode one style. Uh, we got the CIS and Trade Federation versions of the droid control ship. Uh, we've got the CIS version of the battleship as well. So it's a veritable menagerie of Lucre Hulk varieties. We've got them on scope. Form up, attack commencing. Intercepting. I'm on them. You have need of my skills? Destroyer here. 
Copy. Stay in formation. Uh, I copy. Heading to destination. Get behind them. Fire. You will be around me stronger. Open fire. Enemies in range. I Attack have them that now. target. I mean, it's a good thing they're undersized right now for the way the AI uses them. Damn. Want to Luger Hulks everywhere. This is not interdictors. Alright. So, I think that's going to do it for today's everyone. For today's everyone episode. Thank you watching for. Next time, see you then. If you enjoyed this video, here are some more videos you may enjoy. Also, please consider becoming a subscriber, leaving a like, a comment, or becoming a patron on Patreon today. Your support is what keeps the channel going and is greatly appreciated.